In this video, we introduce some of the most commonly used rules for differentiation. The definition of the derivative, involving the limit and the function at different points and so on, is quite tedious to apply, as you've seen if you've looked at that video on the definition of the derivative. Unfortunately, there are many common derivatives that are well known and written, off, written up in tables. And we can just use these, uh, by the end of this video probably, you'll have a good idea how to differentiate a polynomial function. And after doing quite a few of these, you'll get used to doing it and not need to look at the tables anymore. So basically it all comes down to these four rules here. First of all, the function f of x equals to c, just a constant. When we differentiate a constant, we always get zero. Now this kind of makes sense if you think about what the definition of the derivative means. It's the, the rate of change of the function. If you've got a constant, it is by nature constant and not changing. So its derivative, of course, is zero. Now the rest of these follow on fairly neatly, and you can show these with the definition of the derivative. We have a power of x, x to the n. We can differentiate that. We bring the power down the front and multiply it by x to the n minus 1. So we reduce the power and multiply by the old power. When we have a constant multiple of a function, the derivative is just the constant multiple of the derivative of the function itself. So if it was u, it was u dashed, and so on. When we have a sum of two functions, f of x equal to u plus v, the derivative is just the derivative uh, of the first function plus the derivative of the second. So we say the sum of the derivatives. Okay, so we can put these all together and essentially be able to differentiate polynomials. They're also useful in a lot of other things as well. And all of them, like I said, uh, can actually be found using the definition that we've seen in an earlier video. So they can be proven, in other words. But we won't be doing that. Anyway, here's an example. Find the derivatives with respect to x of each of the following functions. Now, we're starting off first with just f of x equal to pi. Remember, pi is a number. It's just a constant. It doesn't change. And f of x equal to x to the 4. So maybe pause for a moment and see if you can do these ones yourself using the table of derivatives back here. All right, so first up we have f of x equal to pi, and pi is a constant. And the table on the previous slide tells us that when we have a constant as our function, the derivative is always zero. So in this case, f dash of x is equal to zero. The rate of change of pi with respect to x is zero. With f of x equal to x to the four, so that's the variable x raised to a power. Again, we can go back to our table, power, f of x equals x to the, in this case, n is 4. So we're going to have the derivative be 4 times x to the 4 minus 1, or 4x cubed. So we might write that out just in full, just so that you can see this once. 4x to the 4 minus 1, which is 4x cubed. So in other words, thinking back to the definition of the derivative, that tells us that at any point we like x, we can tell that the rate of change of x to the 4 with respect to x is 4x cubed. Okay, let's take it a little bit further this time. We've got find derivatives with respect to x of 3x to the 5, and that's a constant multiple of a power of x, and then pi plus x to the 4 plus 3x to the 5. Now, that's a sum of all of the functions we've looked at already, pi, x to the 4, and 3x to the 5th. So we kind of put everything together there. Again, give yourself a few minutes, have a go at these yourself, and then come back and see if you get what I get. All right, so the first one here we've got f of x is 3x to the fifth. Now we know how to uh, differentiate x to the fifth. That's just going to be 5x to the four. But let's look back here, a constant multiple of something. If we have a constant multiple of something, we know how to differentiate. The whole derivative, f dash, is going to be that constant multiple multiplied by the derivative of the function in there. So in this case, we can say that f dashed of x is going to be the same constant multiple 3, we leave it alone, and then it's going to be multiplied by the derivative of x to the 5, so that's 5x to the 5 minus 1. Okay, and just clean that up a bit, it's going to be 15x to the 4. Notice that the constant doesn't disappear here, it's not going to get differentiated out because it's a multiplier. It's only when the constant sits by itself, like pi did back on the previous example, that it'll get differentiated away to 0. So it doesn't differentiate away here, it's left alone. All right, in B, we're putting everything together. So f of x is pi plus x to the 4 plus 3x to the 5. So that's a sum of pi, x to the 4, and 3x to the 5. And back in our table, it says if we have a derivative of a sum, like this one, 
then the derivative is just going to be the sum of the individual derivatives. So we differentiate each individual piece and then add them back together. So in this case, we're going to want the derivative of pi, which we found before to be 0, the derivative of x to the 4, which is 4x to the 3, and the derivative of 3x to the 5, which is right here, 15x to the 4. And we can just neaten that up if you like, just get rid of that 0, and everything's just fine. Okay, so that's putting together all of those rules together and being able to differentiate a polynomial function, or pretty much the sum of powers of x multiplied by constants. Okay, so we now have fairly easy to apply rules, I think, and you probably will as well once you've done a bunch of examples of these. For differentiating constants, powers of the variable, constant multiples of functions, and sums of functions. In essence, we can now differentiate polynomials and a couple of other things as well. All right, so if you're looking in other texts, make sure you check out their section on rules for differentiating constants, powers, and sums of functions. Sometimes they will actually say differentiating polynomials. Uh, make sure you're attempting the exercises, get plenty of practice of this, and it'll really help you with the later, more difficult problems that we do in differential calculus.